YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, bit of an update, got some clear results for the uh, nasty virusy thing that's going about, so I'm safe to uh, wander about and I'm not going to end up hospitalised. And then I went out on motorbike and microwaved myself, not the most intelligent move. But, back to the task at hand, so the G7P, um, I've been asked a few questions that I'm going to try and Put into one video one can you use it and how do you set it up as a pc games controller and the second one is how does it function with vrc pro now this should be pretty easy it's USB C, so any USB C cable should work fine but let's see if we get any weird setup or latency or anything like that so let's crack on with video Right, so first off, we're just going to set a new model memory up just to use for the PC. So, go into model select. And we'll select a blank one. And then we'll just quickly set the name as PC. Right, so, first thing you want to do, once you've got your control plugged in, you're going to want to open control panel, you're going to want to go to device and printers, then once we're on here, and your controller's connected, just plug mine in, you should see it will pick it up as a Flysky FSG7P. So we can right click on that, go to controller settings. In advanced, you can set it to your default controller. Then if you go to properties, and we get that up. So we can see that as throttle and reverse, that works. Steering left and right works. And this is with no configuration done on the controller at all. So SW1 is button one then you have vr1 that's not configured to anything at the moment you'd have to go in and assign it to a channel so you can control it then you've got sw2 on the handle is button two tr1 the two toggle switches buttons three and four and then you've got the three position switch all the way forward is button five so that's just how we've got it configured at the moment um, if you want to use any other variable dials to move the Z axis X rotation Y rotation then all you'd have to do is configure one of those dials to a channel on the actual controller and that would let you set them so if you wanted to set um, VR1 to be an adjustable pot in a game just set that to channel 3 and then you can adjust it but just for this uh, to keep it simple we're just going to use the button assignments so that's all set up and uh, now we can go and launch uh, VRC Pro Right, so once we've got the RC Pro on, we can go to Options, and then Control, and then you're going to want to drop this menu down, so it's the STM32, that's what it's going to pick your controller up as, so check that your left and right works and goes to 100, check your throttle and brake works, you may have to reverse it, depends how you've got your settings on your controller or on VRC, but arms going the right way. So that's working. So if we go into OK and then we just go to practice. I'll just start quick practice. So seems quite nice to start with. So 
so it's nice and responsive I'm not feeling any latency or anything so let's see what happens if we crash yep so I've got it set up I'll just quickly after I finish this go back and show you so I've got it set to the button on the controller so if you crash you can reset your position and you can set quite a few of these buttons up to be whatever you want really in game but yeah does feel responsive enough and you could use one of these controllers quite easily to practice on the RC Pro it feels nice, it's nice and responsive and the buttons are configurable so let's see just take you back and show you the where I've set the button to reset so if we go to control and then custom and you can see in here all you have to do is click on it and then press the button on the controller and then your force pit you can have that set to a button if you like just press any of the buttons that I've mentioned um, so we could have force pit to I believe it's TR1 back um, but yeah you can set any of these up however you like so yep definitely a uh, a nice easy cheap controller to use on the RC Pro right so moving on let's see how it behaves with Forza Motorsport now I do know using uh, other controllers on this there's a few little bits that you need to mess about with on the actual controller setup to get it feeling something like how you'd expect and you'll have to excuse the weird aspect ratio because I play Forza on a 49 inch ultra wide so it's gonna look a little strange so we're going to need options and then controller and then on this one you're going to want to set it to custom combined gas and brake combined steering and then literally you can just go through these so your gas and brake you just pull the throttle your steering just turn your steering then your handbrake just set that to whatever you want and you can just work your way through and then you need to save it so once we've done that we can come back out of here and if we go to a single and then free play and then let's just go race and see uh, see what it's like Initial thoughts, steering feels good, throttle and brakes progressive, so that's not bad. This car is awful for right hand corners, because you can't see anything because it's supercharger. But at least the G7P is behaving as expected, or as you'd like it to, should I say. Yeah, quite, quite nice fields at steering, quite nice fields at throttle and brake. So yeah, I think you could successfully use this as a games controller. Quite a nice feeling game controller as well. 
driving games definitely feel uh, nicer with the steering wheel. I mean, if you're used to driving RC, it feels quite natural to drive like this. And I haven't ripped car off yet, so we're not doing too bad. This is a great big bus to drive. With them, whereas most of the supercharger from this group. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely no issues playing Forza with the G7 bit. So, what I'll do, I'll quickly back out and I'll just show you a few of the settings that I've tweaked what I find just make the steering feel that bit better. So, let's have a look in settings. So, if we go to options, and then back to controllers, and then we want advanced. So, steering inside dead zone, I've got set to 1. The outside, I've got set to 95. And then right down at the bottom, linearity I've got set to zero and steering sensitivity to zero. Can play about with them till your heart's content, basically, till you get it exactly how you want. But that's just quick settings that I know seem to work well with the uh, controllers. But I would say yes, successfully this uh, this little controller for less than sixty quid UK price can quite easily be used as a very successful VRC Pro and games controller. So let's wrap this one up. Right, so there you have it. Nice and easy to set up. Um, no weirdness or anything like that. And I think this would be a very good controller, especially considering price. Um, for someone that's got a number of RC cars and wants to use it as a sort of simulator controller or VRC Pro or Forza or any other car game on PC. Um, nice and configurable, easy to set up, and uh, yeah, seems to function as you'd expect. But thanks again for watching WTF RC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, share to friends and family. I'll catch you guys again in the next one. Where are you?